So how are we going to work together throughout the year? Well, first thing is whether we're working physically with each other, a distance with each other, or one-to-one, -one, or team-to-team, -team, or one member to team, one member to group, whatever it is, what I would like you to attain is something that French students often find difficult, and that's professional informality. The idea that you can be professional without having to be in a suit on a podium in front of a microphone. So I'm trying to get past the point where not being in that situation means that you're not being professional, etc., and you can mess about, etc. It doesn't really matter. Well, it does. Most of the meetings, the vast majority of times you're going to find yourself opposite someone are in cases of professional informality. It's relatively rare when you find yourself on a podium with a microphone and a screen and a laser pan and all of those things that perhaps you're already so used to. Most of the time you'll find yourself having to come up with an idea around the coffee machine with the boss or in a meeting, or perhaps in front of two or three of your um, subordinates, when you're sitting on the edge of a desk, you're not wearing a tie, and you're just chatting. Now that is informal, but it can still be entirely professional. And that is what I'm hoping to aim for in our time together and in your time together. It might be possible that perhaps we're presenting something to an external client or doing a role play and you feel like this needs to be seen to be professional and to wear the suit and to wear the tie and to shine your shoes and to come in and do something as if it was being done at an event, at a conference, in front of your shareholders. That's great. Fine. But for the most part, because it's you, because it's me, it's because it's us together, and often because it's us together in a classroom rather than in an exhibition hall uh, or something like that, we need to be aware that we can be informal. We can sit on the edge of the desk. We don't have to have a microphone, but we can still be entirely professional in the way we prepare, the way we develop our arguments, the way we analyse and evaluate, the way we seek to persuade, the way we seek to convince, the call to action that we're giving and how we get it. All of that can be informal yet entirely professional. So please don't mistake informal for meaning, ah, uh, it's not professional, I'm just being a student. That's not what I want and it's not what you need because you're going out there either on alternance or on your placement, your stage or into work at the end of the course and you will need to be able to play the consummate professional, whether it's in front of 2,000 people at a major conference or whether it's just with your boss or your team. OK, so informal professionalism is what I am really after. There's also the issue of participation. Now, each one of you is a sovereign individual. You're all going through the same course. But how are you going to feel if some members of the team that you've been allocated are not pulling their weight? They're not doing the research. They don't send messages to the Facebook page or Google Meet or uh, contribute to Google Documents. How, how are you going to feel when you are doing something and others aren't? Well, the answer to that one is very obvious. 
you're going to feel rather hard done by. You're going to feel put upon. You're going to feel you're going to be asked or you're being asked overtly or implicitly to do someone else's job for them. This must not happen for any number of reasons. The first one is that you are all earning your degree or your master's. At the end of the day, it's an individual mark. At the end of the day, it's an individual award. Your Rilevator note is uniquely yours and it should represent you. It needs to represent you because that's how you represent yourself to others. So you need to pull your weight always. You need to put in the same amount of time as your colleagues, the same amount of effort, the same amount of creative thought, the same amount of creativity. Now, I'll be looking for that. and My colleagues will be too. Trust me on this. So if there is a piece of work which is team or group based, make no mistake. I will be looking to mark your contribution and its quality. And if your contribution is deficient because you haven't been there, you haven't contributed to the database that the team is building, you haven't um, made a real, genuine, detailed, effective contribution to the presentation. Well, like most of my colleagues, I will start with a team-based base mark. Maybe the whole thing was worth 13 on 20. But your contribution may have been spectacularly good, insightful, with humour and nuance and sharp analysis and conclusions and recommendations that really related to your audience. Maybe you get 16 or 17. Or you, sadly, might be somebody who didn't come to the meeting, didn't produce materials, didn't offer ideas, didn't contribute creativity to the rest of your team. Well, if that's the case, clearly you would not deserve the mark, the base mark that other people have. So if the base mark is 13, you could just get eight, maybe seven, possibly nine, if the contribution isn't up to it. So please don't expect to hide behind your colleagues or hide behind the fact that your teachers, like me, may be seeing things through the lens of technology. We will always endeavour to make sure that you do equal amounts of work and put in equal time and equal effort. If you don't, you will expect to find yourself talking to your course tutor in the presence of the course directors and getting a bit of a dressing down. We do not appreciate that at all. And we cannot have you being carried by your colleagues or carrying your colleagues. That just isn't fair to any of you. It's not fair to your future employers who are trying to judge you by the piece of paper that we award you at the end on your relevant note and your certificate. So please, please, please put in the effort, put in the time, put in the energy, put in the analysis and evaluation, contribute, participate. It's important, not least for you, for the fact that you are the one who's going through this course and why are you going through the course? Answer simply, to learn. And if I go into one of my favourite mini micro nano lectures, my previous university had a university crest, blason, which said to learn is to change. That's why you're doing a degree, because through that, 
or through your masters, you are changing. You will not come out the same person. You will have a different sense of perspectives, of abilities, of capabilities, and you'll be able to use them in a way in which you can change your fortunes and the fortunes of the companies that you work for, the organisations you work for, not necessarily corporations. So there we go. That's really what I'm asking you for. Next, I should talk about technology. Phones, laptops, tablets. They're great. They give access to a range of things from double checking the meaning of a word that suffered in translation through to doing some in-depth research from which you and your colleagues can benefit. So quite often in the classroom, I will ask you to switch those on and go and do some work, do some research, bring that back, share it, draw conclusions from it, brainstorm together with the benefit of that information. These are really useful terms useful modes of inquiry, useful ways of improving your knowledge and your access to information. It's terrific. But I'll tell you what isn't. What isn't terrific as a teacher is when one looks up and one sees people who are laughing at their screens. And you know full well that if you went round to look along the row of their computer screen, it would be messages from mates. It would be photos on Snapchat that they've sent or Instagram, etc. OK, well, that's nice and it's cute and it's maybe not as boring as the lecture. But remember, you chose to be in the lecture. You chose to be in the room. You chose to want to learn. So what does the fact that you're head down looking at your screen and smirking say to your teacher? Answer? I'm not bothered. Answer, laughter is more important than learning. Whoever I've got on my screen is more important than you, Tony. If you want to be absolutely guaranteed to desperately annoy and anger teachers like me who really are interested in what they do, my wife would actually say it's further than that. She would say, I love what I do, so don't get in the way of what I do. If I find people doing this, switching on their phones, looking at their phones underneath the table, behind a, uh, a case of pens, or uh, opening a laptop when I haven't sanctioned it, etc., expect to be told to close them or to actually leave my classes because you're not learning and the only effect you're having is annoying the hell out of me and I'm trying to teach your colleagues who are in the room. I will not put up with that. Now, clearly that's going to be a little bit invisible if a lot of this goes online, but the same applies. Don't distract yourself. We all know of people who spend their whole days completely attached to every message. They're working on their tablet, on their computers, etc. They've got their head around an assignment and then every 37 seconds a new ping message comes up and they have to reply to it. You just lose your thread in that. You use, lose your depth of thought. Don't do it. You've chosen to be in the classroom be in the classroom. You've chosen to be on the receiving end of teaching because you want to learn, even at the end of a computer screen. Don't denigrate it. Don't devalue it. Don't lose the words of hopefully wisdom um, that we are trying to give you. Okay, while I'm at it then, what are your teachers trying to do? Your teachers are essentially passing on to you what I would call received wisdom. We've been to university, degree, master's courses, some of us, not me, I have to say, PhDs, etc., habilitation in the French system. 
and had years of reading, researching behind us. So what do we do when we come into the classroom? The answer is we try to give you the best that we've got, that we've received from our teachers and that we've put into practice. Some of the things have really worked well and we keep them and we pass them on to you. Some of the things haven't worked so well and maybe they're not as appropriate in your world today and your future. So we drop those. We're actually trying to give you the best that we can possibly give. That takes, you might not believe it, an awful lot of effort and commitment to be able to do. And the last thing you want when you're trying to do that, when your heart is in it, is people who are clearly not interested at all because they would rather look at their screens and laugh at messages or photos from last night's party. There is a place for that. Yeah, fine, we all like laughing at that. I do too. But not in fact when somebody's talking to you. Remember I said the word professional? Well, in the classroom, in our relationship, I'm your boss. Would you dare do that? In front of your boss at work, in a meeting? Open up your screen, ignore him or her and laugh at it? You'd expect to get away with that or you'd expect to be fired or put on remand? I think I know what you would do. So please, please, please respect your teachers, not just me. We all care. We all love what we do. And the end product of what we're trying to do is actually to help you to learn. We're not just there to throw things out into the wilderness. We're there actually to help you pick them up, work with them and change, become more capable so that you can have a brighter, perhaps even more well-paid, safer future. So please respect what we've said about technology, about working together and about things like assignments and what you should do with them, how you should work together with them. OK, I recognise I've been preaching a little bit on this and it will sound like it. But I'm actually not going to apologise for that because I believe in what I do, like all of the, my colleagues, and I'm absolutely sure that we would love you to engage with us in the activity of learning which enables you to change and then to change and improve the world around us. Look at it this way. I'm three or four years away from retirement. I'm trying the best I can to pass on whatever flame I've got and I'm looking for you to take it and run with it. OK, so I hope that's not too much to ask. Be professional. Simple as that. OK, all right. We understand each other. Thank you very much.